By the time you see this, it may not be anywhere near Christmas, but as we tape this episode, it happens to be the week before Christmas, and so I want to give to you a wonderful, hearty, healthy, and entirely scrumptious recipe for homemade granola that I think that you just might want to make, perhaps to feed your family, but even possibly for some homemade Christmas gifts. So don't go away. Today I'm sharing with you a simple recipe and I really do mean that. What I love about it is not only is it crazy healthy and nutritious for your family, but it's also pretty shelf stable and it's made with ingredients that you probably already have in your home. They're not extra special fancy things. They might even be in your forever pantry of those forever foods that are gonna last for a really long time. So this is multiple goodness in multiple ways and so we're gonna get right into it. It's super simple. You're gonna have two little parts of this, or three I suppose. We're gonna mix the dry ingredients together, then we're gonna mix the wet ingredients together and then combine them all. And then we're gonna bake them and let them set. That's about as simple as this gets. It's very uncomplicated. Now, your base that you're gonna start with is four cups of oats. And you can get whatever kind you want. I wouldn't get the most expensive or fancy kind. I've just got some I probably got at Walmart, but whole grain, old-fashioned oats. I don't use the five-minute oats. They have less nutrition in them. You just want the old-fashioned oats. We're gonna put four cups of that in, and then we're going to put in either pumpkin seeds or slivered almonds, whichever your family prefers. I'm gonna put um, a whole cup full of that in. And today we're gonna to use pumpkin seeds because we're gonna use cranberries as the berries that we put in at the end. It's gonna be delicious. But you could use slivered almonds and that would work just fine. Just one cup of either kind that you like. And I'll bet some of you have another version that you wanna add. You get creative with your own way of making this recipe. The next thing I'm gonna put in is chia seeds. And I put in one fourth of a cup of those. So we'll put that in and make it extra healthy. You're gonna put in about a teaspoon of the good sea salt, whatever you've got. I use this pink Himalayan sea salt, but whichever kind of salt you have is probably gonna be just fine. And then my favorite, this makes my mouth water, the Saigon cinnamon, a whole teaspoon of that, maybe a little bit rounded on top because I really love a little bit of extra. We're gonna throw that in there and just stir this all together. One. Two. Three. And there's four. All right, and now pumpkin seed, one cup. Fourth a cup of chia seeds. And then, I think I said a teaspoon of ground cinnamon earlier. I, I was wrong. I meant that I like two teaspoons of this and they're heaping. <laughs> so let me get those in there. Kind of rounded. This Saigon cinnamon is better than any other cinnamon you'll get, in my opinion. It has a definite flavor to it, where so oftentimes you aren't even sure if you can taste it at all in there. So two teaspoons of that, and then one teaspoon, I really did mean that, of the salt. Hold on, ready? I've learned my own salt shaker to know that about 30 of those turns is gonna be one teaspoon. And so that's why you just saw me grinding it right into that. All right, we're just gonna stir up all these dry ingredients and then we'll mix the wet ingredients in their own bowl. A 
Okay, we've got all those put together. Now I'm going to get a clean, smaller bowl and we'll just mix the three main wet ingredients together and that's pretty simple. Of course, the most delicious of those next three ingredients is that pure maple syrup. You're gonna want a half cup of that and I usually am extra generous in my half cup measurement of my maple syrup because I love that flavor in the granola. All right, to that one half cup of maple syrup, I'm going to add one half cup of good oil. And some folks like to use olive oil in their granola. I think I can taste the olive, so I'm not a fan of that, even though it's a good healthy oil. I'm gonna recommend coconut oil, and I actually got the organic coconut MCT oil, which is supposed to be, oh, extra good for us if you're on any kind of a keto diet. Anything with that MCT is just kind of a ramped up version of coconut oil. So we'll put in one half cup of this. And then to this, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of good vanilla. Now, some folks like to add a little bit of maple and I think I might try it this time. I haven't tried maple before, but I'm gonna put just a hint of that in. That's purely optional. It just calls for two teaspoons of good vanilla, and that's what I'm gonna to recommend to you. Of course, I love my vanilla about like I love my cinnamon, and that is extra generously poured into the little measurement. So let's see if we can't get two heaping teaspoons of vanilla into this. There's one. I've got some of my own homemade vanilla steeping in the pantry, but it's not quite ready yet. And that wonderful homemade vanilla will be even better than this store-bought. Okay, we've got our three ingredients in here that are wet and we're just gonna get them all stirred in together. I will say that they have a little bit of a hard time incorporating, and so don't worry about that. You don't need to stir until you're blue in the face hoping that they'll all incorporate with each other really well because they probably won't mix up super well. But you do want to give them a good stir, give them the opportunity to play fair with each other. And then we're going to pour it right into the dry ingredients and get them all stirred together, ready to bake. All right, this is so simple. I think any of us could do it. Got it all poured in there and I don't want any of that maple syrup to be left behind. It kind of settles to the bottom. And we're gonna give this a good stir. Now, before I started all of this, I did set the oven at 350. So it's been warming up and it's ready to go. When we spread this here on the cookie sheet in a minute, that oven is already hot waiting for us. So I've put a big cookie sheet out here on the counter and I'm gonna cover it in parchment paper. Not to be confused with wax paper. <laughs> you want parchment paper and we're just gonna put that over it so that nothing sticks to the cookie sheet. Perfect. And we're ready to spread that wonderfully stirred up granola. Now, before I spread this, I just wanna tell you one thing. We're going to actually add two more ingredients to this, but we have to bake it for a couple of minutes first before we add those last couple of additions. Some folks like to keep it just in this state, but I kinda like it with some cranberries in it. So we'll be adding that here in just a bit. I think this large cookie sheet can handle all of this, so I'll scrape it all on here and we'll spread it out. We're going to bake it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna take it out and add some more ingredients to it, just two. I'm actually gonna add the optional coconut and dried cranberries to it. And at that point, I think it'll be just a little bit too much mass for this one 
cookie sheet. So I'll prepare a second one and we'll spread it out really thin at that point because you don't want it heavy and chunky when it comes time to break it up as the finished product. So this is ready to go. Let's pop it in the oven for 20 minutes at 350 Fahrenheit. Ooh, I can smell it and hear it. Do you hear that? It's not quite done yet. Still got about five to eight minutes left in the oven that we want. I'm going to just lift up this paper and try and dump it into this bowl. And then we're going to add one half cup of cranberries and one half cup of shredded coconut. Most folks like the unsweetened coconut. I like the sweetened coconut. A little sweet is good. So here we go. Let's see how this goes. All right, that was with relatively few casualties. That's still hot, so I'll wait for it. But let's go ahead and stir in half a cup of cranberries. Now, I would be using my own personally dehydrated cranberries. If I'm going to use my own though, I'll tell you this. I usually dry them in the whole form and these store-bought are generally cut in half and so I like that in my granola. And that's why I'm using these today. But I would just say if you dehydrate your own cranberries and you half them, it's perfect for this kind of granola. When it's a whole cranberry in your mouth, it's just a little bit too much. So we'll put in half a cup of this and those give a really good sweet tartness. You can see I'm a little generous in my portion there with that. And also I'm using sweetened coconut flakes and I'll tell you a lot of folks like to use the unsweetened and they would like the gourmet shavings instead of this uh, shredded coconut, but this works great and it gives me just the right amount in each bite of the granola. So we're putting in half a cup of this. Again, purely optional, so if you are not a fan of coconut, don't even worry about it. You don't need to add this at all. I will remind you that there are variations of this that you can make yourself. You could use honey instead of the maple syrup. You could also, instead of the cranberries, you could use your homemade raisins that you've dehydrated. We have a video on that if you'd like to see that. Very simple to do. Dehydrated raisins do great in this. And if I'm doing it with the raisin version, I like to add a little bit of those spices that go so well with the cinnamon like cloves and ginger into it instead of the coconut because those make that perfect kind of grandma's oatmeal cookie type taste to it instead of what we're going for today. But we've got our extra ingredients put in there now and we'll give it a good stir and then we're going to spread it out on two cookie sheets and cook it for same 350 Fahrenheit degrees but just for about five to eight more minutes until it just barely starts getting a little golden brown and it kind of uh, has this way of solidifying just a little bit before we put it into our jars to store away. Another thing I like to do is if you are not interested in using the coconut or MCT oil that I mentioned, ghee or clarified butter, that's in your Forever Foods closet if you remember, that makes an excellent replacement for that oil. And of course those almonds, slivered almonds, make an excellent replacement for these pumpkin seeds I have in here this time. It smells amazing. Alright, I've got them all spread out and now I'm going to pop both of these trays in the oven for just five to seven or eight more minutes. I'll watch them very closely so they don't burn and I just want the hint of golden to come on them and I'll know they're ready to go. Ooh wee! 
Here's just one of the two trays and it has a little tiny bit of a sizzle still going on as it releases a little bit of moisture. It looks perfectly done. I can't wait to share this with you. I'll tell you, I'm gonna just let it sit here on the counter and cool and it cools very quickly. I would say just within about five minutes, this is going to be already ready for us to put in some jars that we've got waiting and standing by. It'll keep in these indefinitely, but it'll help them if you're planning to store them for a long period of time. You could actually put one of your own homemade silica gel packets in the top and you could use, this is the perfect thing for you to use that brake bleeder pump to take all of the air out. Remember we've talked about that before? I'll put a link up in the upper corner if you haven't seen that video on how to get all the air out of your jar so that what you put in it is going to store so much longer in that pantry. However, this smells so amazing. I have a hunch I'm gonna be eating it just within the next couple of weeks and giving at least one or two small jars of it away as gifts. Oh my word, I wish you could smell this. It is absolutely delicious. The maple and cinnamon and roasted smell through the air is just fantastic. Now, remember that if you don't like one of those ingredients that I mentioned, you just swap it out for an ingredient that you love and that your family is not allergic to or whatever. This is very forgiving and it will turn out great, I'll bet you, with your version of whatever you put in it. Now, I want to say a couple of things. First of all, I'm gonna post the recipe down below this episode, so make sure you click on that and download your own copy so you can print that out and use it at your home. Also, know that you can make this several different ways. This right here, without changing it any from what I've done today, can be eaten as a cold cereal, just with some good, cold, fresh milk in a bowl for us morning uh, breakfast, but also if you're on the trail and want to throw it in your bag in a li little Ziploc or something, you can take it as a trail mix on a hike. And thirdly, the way that's probably my favorite is on a very cold, crisp morning. This makes the most fantastic hearty oatmeal, hot cereal um, meal for you for a breakfast. So you'll just soak it a smidgen extra long uh, but made just like regular oatmeal and it's going to have all those goodies already mixed into it the only thing i add at that point is just a little bit of extra maple syrup because i like mine sweet okay now it's your turn i hope you'll comment below with your additions or subtractions from this particular recipe i hope you'll share this with somebody you love or even make some as christmas gifts for someone that you love Let's meet back here again, and I may not see you before Christmas, so I hope you can just feel this through the camera. I am sending a hug to you wherever you find yourself today. Merry Christmas, and God bless you, and go out and intentionally make it a point to be a blessing to someone today. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, before you go, I want to share with you this beautiful promise out of the book of Proverbs chapter 24 and it's verses 13 and 14. It actually says this, my son, eat honey for it is good and the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, there will be a future and your hope will not be cut off. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Now go spread the word.